In this video, I'll be demonstrating a way that you can render text from a font sprite sheet like the one I have here. This is very useful when you're dealing with pixel art because a lot of fonts don't scale well down, so you might as well just draw your own at that resolution you want and render that. So to start off, I've got a couple of things. First of all, I have that image I showed a moment ago. That's my font image. It's separated by bars so that I can tell where a character begins and ends. Also, I've got a basic script here. It's just a game loop with black screen, some input, just typical setup. And then I've got a clip function here. The purpose of this function is to take a surface and then I can specify an area in that surface and it'll cut it out for me to use for whatever I want. It, it cuts it out as its own surface. So you're getting a surface from another surface. The other thing I've got here is this list of characters. This is the list of the characters in the same order as they appear in my font sprite sheet. This was very useful and you'll see why in a bit. You'll need to write your own that matches whatever order you've got in your own font sprite sheet. Also, if you're interested in using my font sprite sheets, I'll leave them in the description below. I've released them onto the public domain so you can use them for whatever you want without credit. So to get started, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to load this font sprite sheet. And we're going to split up that font sprite sheet into all of the characters. So I'm going to start... So I'm going to start by writing a font class, which will have all of the functions that we need. Under the init function is where I'm going to load the character images. This spacing value is just a value that represents how many pixels there will be between the characters. And then for a normal space, I will use the width of the A character, but I haven't written that yet. So to start, we're going to have to load that image we're getting all our characters from. And now we have to iterate through it and split it up. In my case, the images are broken up by bars that are 127 in the values of red, green, and blue, so it's a gray. I just have to look for that. So I'm going to set up some variables to keep track of the width of the current character I'm looking at. And then my overall progress. And then I'm going to set up a dictionary for all the characters. Now I have to, to just iterate across this font image. Actually, I don't need this X here. In range font image dot get width. Now this is going to go over every X coordinate in this image and I can check the values using surface.get at. So in our case, font image .get at. So C equals font image .get at and then X and zero. So that's going to be the X coordinate and then zero on the Y axis. Now I need to check for those gray bars. So if C zero is 127, this is just checking the red value of that pixel because in my case, the text is red, the background's black. Neither of those have a red value of 127. The only thing with a red value of 127 are the separator bar. So I only have to look at one part of the color. So if this is the case, I know I found a bar. So I'm going to write pass here for the time being. Otherwise, current care width equals, well, plus equals one. So I increase that. Now, if I do find that bar, that means that's the end. Once I found the end, I can cut out that character. For this, I'm going to need to use this clip function I wrote before. Character image equals clip, and then I'm clipping from font image from the position of X minus current character width and it will need the y position of zero because we're taking from the top and then the width will be the current character width. The height will just be the font image's height. And now we've got our character image. So now I'm going to save that into my characters dictionary. Characters equals, and I'm going to do character count so I can keep track of how many I've done. Self dot character order character count and then character count plus equals one this is where i'm going to use this value here and i'm going to save it as self dot character order 
And then I take this value, put it in there. That's going to be the key for the value in the dictionary. Then I set it to equal this character. So I'm going off of the index in this character order here. And the index is determined by just the order of appearance in the font sprite sheet. And then I have to reset my current character width. Now that we've got this, rendering is actually pretty easy. So I'm going to write a render function, render. It's going to take in a text argument and a location argument. And then I'm going to have an x offset value to keep track of how far I've moved along the x axis. Because every time I place a character, I want to move over a little bit before I place the next character. So for character in text, oh, I also need a surface that I'm rendering this onto. So surf, surf.blit self.characters. Remember, this is a dictionary where the keys are just the characters themselves. So I just put in here, and at the location, plus the x offset, and then the location of y. Now I can increase this x offset by the width of this character. And then plus that extra value I set up earlier for the spacing between characters. So I'm just moving the rendering location by the width of the character plus the spacing so that it moves over the correct amount. And actually I've got this in the wrong section here. So it's supposed to go here. My font equals font small font dot png. This is just calling my rendering function with the surface I want to render onto, the text I want to render, and then the location I want to render in. One more thing I forgot over here is that the X offset has to increase if the character is a space, but the character, well, it is space character is not listed in my font sprite sheet, so I have to make a special case for this. So if character does not equal space, then you do this. Otherwise, x offset plus equals self dot space width plus self dot spacing. And then for self dot space width, I'm just going to do, like I said, I'm going to set it to the width of a, so self dot characters a. And then dot get width. Alright, time to check it and see if this works. So this is a bit small, so it may be hard to see, but it does say hello world in the tiny font over there. Now, just as a test, I'm going to pull in another font that I have made, and this one will also be in the description, so you can see what it looks like with a slightly bigger pixel art font. So I'm loading it as a large font.png, and then I can do the same thing, and then just lower it a bit. Oops, it's big, not large. So as you can see, it now says hello world in the small text, and then also in the big text, it says hello world, I am the fluffy potato. Really, text systems aren't super complicated. You're just rendering the characters in a line, pretty much. And if you want to, you can go and put in the extra effort to make it so that lines can automatically break and go to a new line and stuff. That's the type of functionality that I have in my own text system that I use for my games. If you want to scale this text so it's a bit bigger and you can actually really see the pixels and stuff, it's the same as everything else. You just use pygame.transform.scale on it, or just the surface you're rendering it onto, technically, and then it'll be bigger. Generally, I just scale the whole surface I'm rendering onto, so I'll run an editor on a normal surface and that's just small, and then I scale it up to the window size. Anyways, that's pretty much it for this video. If you're interested in my projects, you can check out my Twitter. If you've got any questions, you can head over to my Discord server. I've got a channel dedicated to questions there. Also, it's just in general a community for Python and Pygame game development type stuff. If you're having any issues, try downloading the code from this video's description. That'll fix most people's issues. Hopefully I'll see you guys in the next video.